Hello, welcome to High Ground Gaming. This is Eric. I'm going to play another game from Kai Stremski Career Replay from the 1961 season using Inside Pitch Baseball. And tonight we get a new series started with the Detroit Tigers from Tiger Stadium. Uh, the Red Sox are going to try to end their six game losing streak. They get swept by the Chicago White Sox at Comiskey Park and then returned home to get swept by the um, Washington Senators in a short two-game series at Fenway Park. So they've lost six in a row after splitting their first four games. So the record now is 2-8. and eight. Detroit came into this game uh, in the actual season with an 8-2 and two record. So we'll see what we can do here. The Red Sox actually came into this uh, with a 5-5 five and five record. So they're just three games off their pace, but... I'd like to see if we can snap that six-game losing streak and start start a winning streak of our own. So Jim Bunning has gone the hill. It's not going to be an easy task for the Red Sox, as Jim Bunning was 17 and 11. As Miss Mags is playing with her mouse, uh, 17 and 11 with one save, 3.19 ERA, 268 innings pitched, only 232 hits allowed. 194 strikeouts and 68 walks. You can see Jim Bunning has his Philly picture here. So we did not actually check his picture here. So we'll be right back. And as you can see, Detroit does not have a logo. So we are going to fix all that stuff and be right back to the game. Alrighty, we're back. We've made all our picture changes and... Every time we start a new series, especially uh, since we just started the 1961 season, uh, we'll have to do that for the, each team. I just forgot to do it because I, I thought there was another game with the uh, current team they were playing, but there wasn't. Um, so a new series with Detroit. So now Detroit's all set. Um, and I did notice one thing about about the seasons back in the schedule anyway, back in at least 1961 anyway. Is there are a lot of weird schedules, not like today's three-game schedules. There are a lot of like two-game schedules. Um, there are a lot of schedules that ended like on a Saturday, like a Friday-Saturday series, and um, you know they started a new series on a Sunday. So it was kind of weird. They didn't have the same types of series as they do today. At least that, so far in the season, I've noticed that a lot of even some one-game series. And I know they probably had some rainouts and whatnot, but. There were just too many two-game series. They couldn't have that many rainouts, I wouldn't think. Um, although, I guess you never know. Um, but, uh, I mean, 1961 could have been a bad year for, for rain or rainouts or something. But it just doesn't seem, by the way it's scheduled, um, that there are, you know, that there are, there seem to be a lot of two-game series and a lot of series ending in weird in, on weird days, <laughs> at least by today's standards. But anyway, um, so let's get back to this game here. So Jim Bunning on the mound, as we said. He gave away his stats, I think, before. And the Red Sox lineup is as falls. Chuck Schilling is the second baseman batting first. Gary Geiger, the second center fielder, bats second. Carl Lestremski, the rookie, um, playing left field, batting, bats third. Vic Wirtz, the first baseman, will bat cleanup. Batting fifth is Jackie Jensen, the right fielder. Pete Reynolds, the third baseman, bat sixth. Russ Nixon behind the plate today. Bat seventh. Pumpsy Green, the shortstop, bats eighth. And Ike DeLock back on the hill. will bat ninth. So that's the lineup Jim Bunning will face. Defense behind Bunning is Calavito, Bruton, and K-Line left to right. Excellent ranged outfield out there, especially with Bruton and K-Line, both with five ranges. Calavito right behind them, above average, with, with four. And not many errors there. Uh, Calavito and K-Line both with above average arm, Bruton with, a, Bruton with an average arm, so very good defense uh, outfield. And the infield, not quite as good. Um, all the, all the uh, fielders are average except for Boros, which he's below average range-wise. Uh, Fernandez at short will commit the most errors with a 10 rating. And Cash is the most sure-handed at 
first with a 5 rating. Behind the plate, Brown is average range, commits a, few, commits a decent amount of errors, and but has an excellent arm. And Bunning has excellent range, uh, but will commit quite a few errors. So that's your defense behind Bunning. So Schilling steps in, hitting 282 on the season with an RBI. Red Sox trying to end their six-game losing streak. One one. One one. And it's gonna be a pop up to first. Cash makes the catch for out number one. So that'll bring up Gary Geiger next. Gary Geiger off to a good start, hitting 333 with a homer and four runs batted in. He's also scored six runs. And it'll be a foul ball. And this could be extra bases, and it is, as Geiger. Will triple the center field. So a one out triple by Gary Geiger, and the Red Sox are in business. All right, so that'll bring up the captain, Kai Shremsky. Look, he's still looking to get his first RBI in the season. Average down to 188 with no homers and no runs batted in. Has scored three runs. So let's see if Shremsky can get his first RBI of the season and put the Red Sox on top, one nothing. Here's the pitch by Bunning. And he will strike out. He cannot. So Yastrzemski can't get it done. So let's see if Wirtz can drive in the run. Wirtz struggling also, hitting just 174 with a homer and an RBI. Ooh, ballpark check here at Tiger Stadium. Oh! And Dick Wirtz is going to take Bunning deep and out of here. It was as it was hit to deepest part of the ballpark, deep away center field. That was a no doubter too. So Dick Vic Wirtz with his second home run of the season. This time a two run shot will put the Red Sox on top two to nothing. So good start for the Red Sox and Dick War Vic Wirtz. So we have Jackie Jensen next. Jackie Jensen hitting 270 on the season with five runs batted in. It's going to be a range play. And line drive to Wood. He's not going to be able to get to it. So that'll go into left field as K-Line throws it back in. So Jensen on with a two-out single after the homer by Wartz. So Pete Reynolds up now. Pete Reynolds hitting 275 with two homers and five runs batted in. Here's the pitch by Bunning. And he'll ground out back to Bunning for out number three. But the Red Sox get on the board on a home run by Vic Verts. Take a 2 nothing lead after one half. So Detroit coming up now against Ike DeLock. DeLock, DeLock had a one good outing, which he got the victory, but the other his other outing was pretty bad. Um... I think as he lasted only, I think he lasted eight and two thirds in his original outing, so he only lasted two and two thirds innings before being driven from the game. But all in all, one and zero record, one four point seven eight ERA, eleven and a third innings pitched, sixteen hits allowed, three strikeouts and one walk. So the lineup for the hometown Detroit Tigers is going to be Jake Wood, the second baseman, bats first. The center fielder Bill Bruton bats second. L. K. Line in right fielder bats third. Batting cleanup is Rocky Colavito, the left fielder. Norm Cash, the first baseman, bats fifth. Steve Burrows is at third. 
batting sixth. Batting seventh is Dick Brown behind the plate. Chico Fernandez, the shortstop, bats eighth. And on the mound, batting ninth is Jim Budding. So Jake Wood, 258 hitter with 11 homers and 69 runs bat in, is a threat to steal if he gets on. And once again, we're just playing all the Red Sox games. Um, we're not playing so all the other team. Well, I'm not playing all the other teams' games because um, that would take forever, as there's no AI in this game. So we're just primarily doing a Red Sox replay, playing all the Red Sox games. So that's why I'm going over the actual stats instead of the season stats, because a lot of the players do not have any stats yet, or very little stats. So all right. So Jay Wood steps into the box. The lock looks in for the sign from Nixon. Here's the wind up in the pitch. And after this, we'll talk about the Red Sox offense. I mean, uh, defense. And that's going to be a strikeout for Wood. So DeLock with a strikeout to lead off the game. So for the Red Sox, the outfield is not quite as good as the Detroit outfield by comparison. But it's the Yastrzemski, Geiger, and Jensen. Yastrzemski and Geiger both average range. Jensen above average range. Yastrzemski the most air prone with a 7 rating. And... Geiger and Jensen both have three ratings, so they don't commit many errors at all. All three of the outfielders have above average arms at minus one. So the infield, left to right, is Runnels, Green, Schilling, and Wirtz. Runnels and Green are below average range. Schilling, above average range, and Wirtz, average. Arrow-wise, not very sure-handed on the left side of the infield is Green has a 16 out of 20 rating. Schilling, the best uh, defensively there, will not commit many errors with only a three error rating out of 20. So that's your Red Sox defense. With, so one down brings up Bill Bruton. Bruton hit 257 with 17 homers and 63 runs batted, and also a threat to steal as he had 22 steals on the season. So you want, if you can keep off the top two runners for Detroit, yeah. Gives you a good chance to win. However, Bill Bruton is on with a single. So that brings up the dangerous LK line. LK line hit 324 with 19 homers and 82 runs batted in in 1961. Also, somewhat of a threat to steal with 14 steals. And that's going to be a walk. So to put runners on first and second with a one down for Rocky Calavito. Rocky Calavito had an excellent year in 1961. 290 with 45 homers and 140 runs batted in. So he had a monster year. So Ike Delac is going to have to be careful of pitching to Calavito. And he'll pitch around him, but and he's going to get him to fly out to left. So Shemsky makes the catch for a big out there, number two. Not out of it yet, as the dangerous Norm Cash is up now. Wow. So Calavito had 45 home runs. Norm Cash had 41 home round trippers. Hit 361. It's probably going to be the lead of the league, I would imagine. There, I'm not sure entirely. Have to look that one up and see if uh, see if that led the league or not. And also the 132 runs batted in, and also somewhat of a stealer too, stole 11 bases. So Norm Cash did lead the league with 391 average. Also had the high on base percentage of 487. Wow, almost a 500 on base percentage. OPS of 1.148 to lead the league. And 193 hits that led the league. Wow. Also walked 124 times while striking out only 85 times in 673 total plate appearances. Wow. So he had a monster year. Was not the MVP though, as he finished fourth in the MVP rating voting. 
Who was the MVP? It was Roger Maris, of course. Makes sense with his 61 home runs. Rocky Calavito, Calavito finished 8th. Frank Larry for the Detroit Tigers finished 7th. So Detroit with a whole bunch of guys in the top 10 for the MVP awards in 1961. So, all right. So, the Lost got to try to bear down and get cash here. Got to be careful with them. Ooh, range play. And that not be good. And that's going to be a base hit. No, it's not, actually, as Reynolds is able to get to it. And he throws out cash to end the inning. So a big play by Reynolds to get to that ball and prevents Detroit from getting on the board. So after one full, it's the Red Sox two and Detroit nothing. So it'll be Nixon, Pumpsy Green, and Ike DeLock up against Jim Bunning. Look to extend their 2 nothing lead. Because we know how bad the bullpen is for the Red Sox. We definitely want to try to score as many runs as possible. So Nixon comes in hitting 273 with an RBI. In 22 at bats. And that's going to be a 2-2. So he's going to get hit by a pitch. So Bunning hits him. And Nixon will go trot the first. Shakes it off. So to bring up Pumpsy Green. He's already got two home runs on the season. 278 average, two homers and seven runs batted in. So Nixon gets his lead at first. Bunning looks her on the back, toes the rubber, winds up and delivers. And he's going to strike out Green. So a big strike out there for the first out of the second. Brings up Ike DeLock. The lock, two for four in the season so far. Only a 104 hitter. Hmm. I think we're going to try to get the runner in scoring position here. Because he's not much of a hitter. See if we can get it done. He's only a two rating in bunting, but it's better than a one. Popped up for the out. Roll 1d6 versus the lead runner's base running if not higher than if not higher than base runners out. Yes, yeah, so that's going to be a double play. He's only a one. So, he, so that backfires as the lock pops it out into a double play. Pops the bunt up and the catcher running his very slow speed so he gets doubled up so that backfires on the Red Sox so we'll head to the bottom of the second good news is though is that the top of the order shilling is coming up next inning so not the worst thing in the world so it'll be Burroughs Brown and Hernandez Fernandez up against the lock Burroughs hit 270 with five homers and 62 runs batted in ID gestures checking in, going live. Check out his channel. He's playing a lot. Of, he's been playing a lot of war strategy games lately. So check his channel out as well. He does a lot of baseball sims too. Some other sports related as well as RPGs. Good channel. Check him out. So two three. So three one. That's going to be a base hit. So Burrow's on with a leadoff single for the Tigers. And Dick Brown up now, the catcher. He's going to be called upon to sacrifice. Brown, a 266 hitter with 16 homers and 45 runs batted in. It's a kind of a strange move here, but we'll go with it. If you want to give us an out, we'll take it. And a successful sacrifice bunt. 
So Brown is retired, and Bortles moves in the scoring position with one down. For the number eight hitter, Chico Fernandez, 248 hitter with three homers and 40 runs batted in. So Bortles looks the runner back, winds up in the pitch. It's going to be a range play. And that's going to be a pop up to Schilling. Glad it was hit to him. As with anybody else, that would have been a miss. But Schilling is able to get to it. And Burroughs will hold at second. So two down now for the pitcher, Jim Bunning. Let's see if how much of a hitter he is. Oops. So Bunning, just a 130 hitter with four runs batted in. Does have six runs scored. And he'll strike out this time. And that'll do it. Have you picked your designated driver for this evening? Please remember to drink responsibly. So we'll head to the th third here with the Red Sox up 2 nothing. So Delac pitching much better than he has than he did in the last game, which he lasted only two and two thirds innings before being driven from the game. So top of the order, Schilling, Geiger, and Yastrzemski will face Bunning here in the third. Schilling 0 for 1 in the day. And that's going to be a range play. And Calavito goes over and gets to it. So that saved at least a single, if not extra bases on that one. So Geiger up now, tripled and scored his first time up. Came around, came in on the Wurtz two-run homer. Oh, this could be a home run off Bunnings card. So Geiger could go deep this time as Geiger is an 11 here. And the split is a five. So that is going to be a home run for Geiger. This ball is over the fence. So Red Sox with the power display here. Early on, Geiger hits a triple his first time up and then hits a home run his next time up. So Geiger already half his way, halfway to the triple, I mean halfway to a cycle, has got the two hardest ones out of the way. Now just needs a single and a double with plenty of at-bats as we're only in the top of the third. So we'll have to keep an eye on Geiger, see if he can hit for the cycle. So the Red Sox now up three to nothing. Stremski struck out his first time up. Oh, I thought it was going to be a triple, but it was not as Bunning was. If it, Bunning was a lefty, then that would have been a triple for Yastrzemski, but instead it's a fly out to right. So Yastrzemski gone once again. The struggles continue. So that brings up Wirtz. Wirtz hit a two-run home run. In the back in the first, here's the pitch by Bunnin. And this time he'll fly out to right to end the inning. So Red Sox tack on another run on the solo home run by Geiger, and Delac now has a three nothing lead. So it'll be top of the order, Wood, Bruton, and K-Line. Bruton and K-Line. Has Miss Mags's got something to say? As she nudges the mic. Hmm? You got something to say here, huh? <laughs> All right. So Miss Mags is here off camera, peering at the screen. So Jake Wood struck out his first time up. No, nope, he's not hit by the pitch. Instead, he fights it off and pops it up to short. So one down in the third. Brings up Bruton. Bruton singled his first time up. Delac line only two Tiger hits so far. And 
and it's a file bar. And he'll fly up to your stream screen left for route number two. It brings up LK line, walked his first time up. Two down and the base is empty. And he'll ground out the third to end the inning. So that does it for the Tigers in the top of the third. So after three and a half, it's the Red Sox three and the Tigers nothing. It'll be Jensen, Runnels, and Nixon if anybody gets on green for the Red Sox. Jensen singled his first time up. And this time he strikes out. So Bunning with his third K of the game. Brings up Runnels who's 0 for 1. And it's going to be a range play at Tiger Stadium. And Calavito, Calavito makes it look easy. It's a two up and two down in the Red Sox fourth. Brings up Russ Nixon. He was doubled off after reaching on a walk, I think. No, it wasn't a walk. I can't remember how he reached. May have been a fielder's choice there. As he does not have an official at bat. So 4-5. And he's going to strike out this time. Doesn't strike out a lot, but does this time. So that's going to do it for the Red Sox in the top of the fourth. So Red Sox with a 3 nothing lead. We'll face the heart of the order in Colavito, Cash, and Boros. Well, Two-thirds of the heart of the order, Colavito and Cash, anyway. Um, Colavito, 0 for 1 so far. Avoids the strikeout. And grounds it weakly to the lock. For out number one. So it brings up Norm Casho for one. And he'll fly out to Strems game left for out number three uh two. Boros up now, singled his first time up. And this time he'll fly out to Jensen and Wright to end the inning. So the White Sox go, I mean, the Tigers go quietly in the top and the bottom of the fourth. And after four full, Red Sox three and Tigers nothing. White Sox still have only, I mean, yeah. Detroit has still managed only two hits on the day off the lock. So the lock having. An outing similar to his first outing, which is a good sign for the Red Sox. Hoping to snap their six-game losing streak. So it brings up Pumpsy Green, who struck out his first time up. This is going to be a ballpark check at Tiger Stadium. So 5-6. Ooh, this could be a home run, too. And it is, as Pumpsy Green has only a five-power versus right-handed pitching. But I think he had another home run like this, too. I think his first home run was like this. So Green... Goes yard. And it's now a 4 nothing lead. Courtesy of three Red Sox home runs. A solo home run. By. Actually a two run homer by Wurtz. And then solo home runs by Geiger. And now Green. So Green hits his third home run. And the Red Sox adds to the lead now 4 to nothing. So that brings up DeLock. DeLock's 0 for 1 in the day. And he strikes out off of his own card. So he strikes out quite a bit. So Chuck Schilling up now. He's 0 for 2 on the day. And no, nope, not much of a chance here. And only a 1 to 2 there. And, a one, and then he would have had to have two rolls of two. One on the pitcher's card and the blue de on the D20 of 1 or 2. And then another one on. Shilling, so I mean, on uh, his own, 
So that would have been a 10% time, two out of, yeah, one out of 10 times one out of 10. So he only had a one out of a hundred chance of getting a home run on that. But does get on on a base hit. So Schilling trying to help his own cause. Gets on with a one out single. And it looks like Geiger is gonna square around the bunt. Yeah, well let me get let me do a bunt, why not? He's trying to get that runner in scoring position for Yastremski. Bunted too hard, proceed as he would any double play. Not good here. So let's see what's gonna happen here. However, it's still gonna work out the same way as Schilling is able to advance the third. And Geiger is still retired at first. So Geiger gets the job done. Didn't look good like it was gonna, but he does. So it brings up Yastrzemski with an RBI opportunity. Yastrzemski struggling mightily. Really needs this, an RBI or something just to get, him, get himself going here. Great potential. Just not starting off that well. That's going to be 2 6 is a range play at Tiger Stadium. 4 6, and oh man. Eh, that still would have been hard for Ustremski against the righties. Amazingly, Ustremski, 12 rating against the left handed pitching and only a 4 rating against the righties being a lefty. That's, that is kind of an odd stat there. However, he's going to miss it here. Oh, and he did have a shot here too. But again, the outfield, excellent. As Bruton makes it look easy. And Yastrzemski cannot get the RBI. So Yastrzemski's struggles continue. And it's a remains a 4-0 lead after the Pumpsy Green homer. They do get one. So we head to the bottom of the fifth. Halfway through, it's Red Sox 4-0. So bottom third of the order up for the Tigers. This is probably going to, they're probably lift bunting for a pinch hitter, being down by four. We'll have to see on that one. So Brown comes up first. I believe he walked his first time up. And this time he'll strike out. So, the lock gets his third K of the day. Brings up Chico Hernandez 0 for 1. Hernandez. And he'll fly out to Stremsky and left for out number two. So Bunning up now. Let's check out Bunning. Let's see how much he's got left in the tank. So Bunning still has a lot left in the tank. Down by four. There are two outs and nobody on. And if it was only one out, maybe. Or no outs. So I'm going to let Bunning go another inning. He's still got a lot of gas in the tank. So let's, uh, let's let him hit here. Maybe he can get us a base hit. Get... Detroit a base hit, not us. As we're playing the Red Sox. Nope. As he is going to fly out to center. No! So we'll head to the sixth. To Boston four and Detroit nothing. Two hits. Still only two hits allowed by DeLock. Wirtz up now. He's one for two with a two run homer back in the first. Open up the scoring in the game. Oh, and this could be a home run too. No, oh, it's going to be above the number here. So that would have had to have been to 1 to 11. So that would have been an 11 out of 20 chance. And a 10 out of 20 chance. And so 11 out of 20. So basically, one, 1 out of 4 chance he would have had, basically. Which, were, which are good odds. <laughs> Does not get it here. Oh. It grounds out the second for out number one. So Jensen up now, one for two with a strikeout. Another range play at Tiger Stadium. Or just an at Tiger's ballpark card check. Not a range play this time. 
Oh, could this be a home run? I don't have much of a chance here, but I think that might be following the Rangers. He hits a one up his D20, and it does as Jackie Jensen goes yard. Over the fence and out of here. So the Red Sox power display continues with their fourth home run of the game. A solo homer this time by Jackie Jensen and his first home run of the year and his sixth RBI. So the Red Sox increase their lead now 5 nothing, And this will probably be Jennings' last, I mean Bunning's last inning. So Pete Reynolds 0 for 2. See if he, but they're going to leave Bunning out here to try to close out this inning. And there is action in the Detroit bullpen. And he'll ground out for out number two. So it rings up Nixon now, 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Fouls one's fouls went off. The lock repitches. That's gonna be a range play. And Fernandez is able to get to this one. Throws him out. And he'll do it for the Red Sox in the top of the fifth. So head to the bottom of the sixth. With the Red Sox up now 5-0 after the solo homer by, <clears throat> by Jensen. So Wood leads it off top of the order for the Detroit Tigers. He's 0-2. for 2. It's a lot cruising. Oh, I said that too soon as Wood is going to take him deep and gone. And yes, it was as Jake Wood gets his first home run. Well, can't really go by that. He did hit 11 home runs on the season. Puts the Tigers on the board. 5-1 to one now. So the ball is flying out of here today at Tiger Stadium. Thankfully, mostly for the Red Sox. So Bruton up now. Bruton 1-2 for two on the day. Has one of the now three Tiger hits. So the shutout is gone for DeLock. He's not worried, though. Red Sox desperately needing a win here. And he'll fly out to right for out number one. Brings up K-Line 0 for 1 with a walk. And Geiger will get to this one and make the catch. So it brings up Rocky Calavito. Slugger is 0 for 2 on the day. This is going to be a range play. Red Sox have been passing all their range plays so far. Can it continue? Yes, it can. As Yastrzemski is able to get to this one. So Yastrzemski tracks it down, and that's it for the Tigers in the sixth. But they do get one back on a Jake Wood solo home run. So after six full, it's Red Sox five and the Tigers one. So Bunning will face Green, Delock, and Schilling. Yeah, maybe we'll let him stay another inning. He strikes out Green. So Delock, do we want to leave Delock in? Oh yeah, Delock's got a lot in the tank, so Delock will continue. He will hit for himself. 0 for 2 of the strikeout. And he'll fly out to Calavito for out number two. Top of the order, Schilling up now. One for three. Single as the last time up. This is going to be a Tiger Stadium check. 2-2. Two, two. And that will be a fly out to Calavito once again. So seventh inning stretch time here in Detroit. Red Sox up 5-1. Hometown crowd sings Take Me Out to the Ball Game. So it'll be Cash Burroughs and Brown up against the Lock. 
Cash 0 for 2 on the day. And he's going to fly out to Jensen and right for out number 1. Boros 1 for 2. That's a strikeout. So the lock now with 4Ks on the day. So that'll be Dick Brown. Strikeout victim his first time out. Also walked, I believe. The only walk that DeLock has given up so far. Oh, he avoids the walk there. And flies out to Jensen right to end the inning. So the Tigers go in order in the bottom of the seventh. So we'll head to the eighth. The Red Sox with a four run lead. So Geiger, Stremski, and Wurtz up now. Geiger, two for three, hit a solo home run. His, not his first time, his second time up. And Geiger does not look like he's going to be able to get his cycle today. Let's see if we can get a little closer, though. Nope. I mean, he'll line out to short. Fernandez at short for out number one. Shremskip now hitless on the day. Be nice if he could get on. Get himself a hit today. And he cannot. As he Shremski grounds out the third. So that's going to be a Wurtz one for three with a two run home run back in the first. And he's going to go possibly deep again. And he does as Dick Wirtz goes yard once again. So Dick Wirtz, Vic Wirtz with a solo home run this time. Three runs batted in. Two homers on the day. And the Red Sox get that run back and go back up by five, six to one. Jackie Jensen also is homer today. And Bunny will get him. And that'll do it. So the Red Sox commanding lead 6-1. to one, Looking to snap that six-game losing streak. We're going to see if we can get the lock to go the distance and give that bullpen a rest as the bullpen has been awful so far. Blowing a lot of even big leads at times. So we are just going to ride the lock as far, far far into this game as we can. Try to get a complete game. Two innings away from that. Six outs away from that. So Chico Fernandez up two, 0 for 2 on the day. Ooh, and he's going to get a leadoff walk. And Bunning will be lifted for a pinch hitter. So let's see what pinch hitters were used on this day, April 27th, back in 1961. Let's see here. All right. Just waiting to get back to the box score. There we go. All right. So let's see. So I believe George Thomas was used as a pinch runner. Uh, so we don't want to use him unless there weren't any other pinch hitters here. Hmm. What else could we pick? As Detroit did use Bob Bobo or Osborne, which would make sense. I'm going to go with Bobo Osborne. So Bobo Osborne comes on the pinch hit. 215 hitter with two homers and 13 runs batted in. 93 at bats. 
So runner on first and nobody out for Bobo Osborne. Oh, no, that's above this roll, so we're good there. So it's going to be a fly ball to Yastrzemski. Makes the catch for out number one. Jake Wood, responsible for the only Detroit run, hit a solo home run his last time up. And this time, the lock gets him. So two outs in the Tiger 8th. Brings up Bill Brute and one for three on the day. Oh no. And this could be a home run. Well, Bill Bruton. Hmm. A one to eight. So we have a 40% chance here. One to eight. Let's see what we get for the split roll here. This could make it a 6-3 game. No, he does not get the home run. It's a 13 roll. So thankfully, it's just a deep fly ball out to Jensen, who makes the catch on the warning track to end the inning. Whew. As the lock breathes a sigh of relief. That would have made it a three-run game. So let's see here. So for Detroit, we got a couple lefties coming in. So we are going to... Well, let's just see. We're probably going to bring in a lefty, but let's just see who is used. Credenza and Fisher. So Credenza is a lefty. And Fisher is a righty. So we're going to bring in Credenza. He only pitched six innings on the year, but one and two thirds of them were today. So we're going to try to at least give him an inning here. Hopefully for the Red Sox, that's all he's going to need is an inning, or else, because that'll mean the. We've gone into extras, so we don't want any more. We don't want that. So Ronald's up now, 0 for 3 on the day. Gredenza. Yes, Miss Mags. Miss Mags is saying, go Red Sox. So Gredenza 1 and 0 on the season, for the, for the season. 7.50 ERA, 6 innings pitched, 9 hits allowed, so. It's possible the Red Sox could get some offense here. Oh, and it might happen as it's going to be a... It is. It's going to be a home run, I think, for Pete Runnels. Because that's a 1-3-1. to three one. It's going to hit that, and it's going to be a 17, which is 1-18 to 18 against there. So, No. Oh, no, the home run question mark, it would have been a possibility, but it's just a regular home run. So it will not, as Reynolds is only a 5 rating. So he does not go yard, but he does get a single. So Reynolds on with his first hit of the day. Brings up Nixon, 0 for 2 with the strikeout. 2 4. Oh, let's see what we got here. So we have a split roll of five. So that'll be a single. So Nixon is on. And Reynolds will hold it second. So the first two runners on for the Red Sox. Brings up the switch hitting Pumpsy Green. Green one for three with a solo home run. It's also struck out twice. This is going to be a range play at Tigers at uh, just a range play. And this and Boros is able to get to this one. Can he turn two? Takes the hit away. I think it is going to be a double play. No, it's not. Possibility of a double play, but it's not, as it's just going to be a. Fielder's choice, they do get the middle runner. So runners at the corners with a one down for Delac. He'll hit for himself. So Delac with an RBI opportunity here. 
and they still will take now nah, they'll leave him in against the pitcher and that's gonna be a fly out to right and no he's not gonna tag as Reynolds is not much of a base runner he's a good stolen base guy but not much of base running skills are not that great so they're gonna hold him so that'll bring up Chuck Schilling one for four and he'll pop up the third to end the inning so the Red Sox lead remains at five and we head to the bottom of the ninth with K-Line, Colavito, and Cash up, the heart of the true heart of the Detroit lineup. So the lock, trying to get a complete game here. Face K-Line first. It's been pretty quiet today. 0 for 2 with the walk. And he goes. And another successful range play. Schilling makes the play over to Wirtz. And there's one gone in Detroit ninth. So only two outs left for Detroit. Calavito, very quiet day, 0 for 3. So Delac has held the heart of the order, especially of Detroit, in check, allowing only three hits. One of them, unfortunately, was a home run, but only three hits on the day. Only... I think one hit since like the second or third inning. So he's been in command all day. So Calavito won four. And he's going to get a hit. Only the fourth Detroit hit, a one out single here in the ninth. So Norm Cash hitless on the day 0 for three. And he'll fly out to Jensen and right. So Detroit down their last out. Red Sox with one more out can end their six game victory and get their third dub. I mean, a six game losing streak and get their first victory in a long time and their third victory of the year. Their first victory since, I believe, game four. Now, this is game 11. So Boros won for three of the strikeout. Here's the pitch by Delac. Oh, and Jensen's unable to get to this one. So the first range check that the Red Sox have failed today. And Calavito will make his way to third. So runners at the corners. As there is some action stirring in the Red Sox bullpen. Looks like Hillman is getting up to quickly get ready as Pinky Higgins goes up to try to buy some time for his reliever just in case we'd like to try to give DeLoc the benefit here leaves him in goes back to the dugout said go get him as Dick Brown comes up 0 for 2 with a strikeout Oh. So the lead runner advances, so it's going to be two runs coming in. And Brown will reach, make his way to third. So that is going to be it. As once again, DeLoc comes one out away from getting a complete game, but cannot seal the deal. And Hillman is going to come in. Dave Hillman will come in out of the bullpen to try to close it out. And No, we're not going to bring him in, though, because he didn't have any saves on the season. So we're going to bring in... I don't... Fornley's has been awful. Early hasn't been much better. Oh, Stallard really hasn't been good either. So Billy Muffet, although he's a starter... He did have two saves on the season, so let's bring him in and try to get a save here. See if we can get one out here. 
So here we go. Muffet. 0-1-1 record, 5.89 ERA, 10 and two-thirds innings pitched. 16 hits allowed, four strikeouts in one walk. Yeah, it's not, the pitcher doesn't get any saves on the year. I don't like to, don't like to bring him in to try to get a save. You know, that means he. Although, yeah, this the Red Sox I think were behind in this game, or at least tied. Yeah, they did. Hmm. Just trying to figure out why he got the win. Oh, because he went six and two thirds innings. That's why. So. He was not in a safe situation. He was in a... The Red Sox were either behind or tied at the time. So that makes sense. So it's not... So yeah, we don't want to bring him in in a non-safe situation. I mean, in a safe situation when he's not really a closer. All right. So 1-2. One, 1-6. Two. One, ah! And all of a sudden, the Red Sox start failing their range checks. And it's now a 6-4 game. Oh, man. So the Tigers can bring the tying run up to the plate now. Oh, my goodness. So the Red Sox pitching is, fails them in the ninth. They just cannot close out games. Still got some breathing. We only need one out. As they're going to lift their pitcher, Gredenza. And Charlie Maxwell will come in to pinch hit. So Charlie Maxwell comes in. 229 hitter on the season with five homers and 18 runs batted in. So Muffet talks it over with Nixon. Goes back to their, the mound. Nixon behind the plate. Looks in for the sign. Nods his head. Kicks and delivers. Oh, thankfully, that could have been disastrous as a 1-9 to nine would have been an extended the inning. But instead, he'll fly out to left to mercifully end the inning as Yastrzemski calls for it and makes the catch. So the Tigers made it interesting as the Red Sox almost blew another one in the ninth, but they do get the victory, so we'll take what we can get here as the Red Sox improve to 3-8. and eight, Getting the third win of the season. Home runs by Geiger, Jensen, Green, and Wirtz with two. So five big home runs for the Red Sox. Jake Wood also added a home run for Detroit to get Detroit on the board. Back in the sixth. So let's look at the box score here. So Red Sox hold on. DeLock gets the win 2 0. Fortunately, he can again cannot close it out after going eight and two thirds inning. Ends up allowing six hits on four runs. Definitely pitched much better than that. Maybe we should have taken him out, but. We wanted him, with the, as awful as the Red Sox bullpen has been, we wanted to see if he could close that out and not give the bullpen a rest, which we kind of did because Muffet is more of a starter. Um, so he did get a save like he did in the actual, not in the actual game, but you get two saves on the season, so it is one right here. So we're going to try to keep this video below an hour. So Red Sox with their power supply is able to beat Jim Bunning and the Detroit Tigers. So thank you for joining me. Look at your stats here. And we will see you in the next video as the Red Sox try to go 2 in a row against and sweep the Detroit Tigers. Sounds good. So take care. Good night and God bless. Bye-bye now.